<laughs> so we are back. We are back for week three. It's David's birthday. What? We're super, That's super true. pumped. And we're here to talk about some new things about prayer. Because last week we talked about our prayer lives, what it looked like. And now we want to start talking about like specific ways you pray and how those ways have impacted our lives. So David, what are we talking about today? This week we're talking about intercession. And what the heck does that mean? It's basically when we <laughs> ask God to pour out grace or we pray for a particular situation and God's power to be manifested in that situation in another person. I have a cool example from the Bible. Give it to us. Okay, we'll thanks. Abraham, I'm sure you've heard of him. He was the father of the nations. The nations. And right after he received that appointment from God, God was asking himself, hey, should I really tell Abraham my plan to destroy the city of Sodom because of how sinful they are? And God decides he's gonna tell Abraham. And Abraham, out of how much he loved the people in Sodom, he, he begged God super boldly. He challenged him basically saying, surely you're more merciful than to let 50 righteous people die that at, the, at the fault of a city full of wicked people. And then Abraham slowly, asks God time and time again to reduce the number of righteous people that he needs to find in order to save the city. And he brings it all the way down to 10 people. And at one point, Abraham even tells God, hey, don't, don't get mad at me, but I'm gonna ask you again to be even more merciful. And he brings it down lower. So when he gets to 10 people, he says, God, if you find only 10 righteous people in this city, will you spare the whole city? And God says, yes, okay. And that's what we're doing when we're interceding. We're basically yeah. seeing a situation that isn't like God wanted it to be, whether it's sickness or misbehavior, and we can pray that God's love would be known despite that that, that situation, basically. Wow. Yeah, whoa. That's amazing. Abraham, amazing intercessor. Maggie, who's your favorite intercessor? Great, so I love St. Monica because of her constant intercession for her son, Augustine. And so we know Augustine later in life, he became this great saint, this great doctor of the church. But before he was living a life of debauchery, right? He fathered a child out of wedlock, and he even used to pray this prayer. He'd say, God, please make me pure, but just not yet. And so his mother, Monica, relentlessly prayed for her son. She prayed that her son might come to know the love of Jesus. And after many, many years, finally St. Augustine um, had his conversion to Jesus on behalf of Monica's relentless intercession. And now we sing a song about it. At mass. At mass. Augustine. <laughs> you know you've heard it. Um, so my favorite intercessor is actually my Aunt Esther. She has a bulletin board in the area where she prays every day, and she's put post-it notes all over it of people who have asked for her prayers. And then when a prayer is answered, she'll write the date on it and put it in a faith uh, journal that has all these miracles. So that's just a super practical way to have intercession and see, like, oh, I'm interceding, and here's a direct effect of my intercession, like the Father is listening to me. And to make sure you really do it, because a lot of times I'll just say, oh, I'll pray for you. And then yes. when does it happen? Never. Yeah, you might forget. And just remember, your prayers are powerful and effective. Mm -hmm. They're just as powerful as Abraham's prayers. They're just as powerful as Monica's prayers. Your prayers are powerful and effective, and what you pray actually matters. Yes, amen. So we have a new challenge for you this week, and David is gonna give it to you. We challenge you to take a step in growing an intercession this week by praying for your students particularly. Because the, the way we're gonna be best, uh, we're best gonna teach the students here yeah. is when we truly love them and we truly pray that God's love for them would be revealed to them and they would know it. Because that's the context that all of the information we teach is, is designed to be taught in, in the context of God's love. Right, and so a simple way we can do that by interceding for our kids is um, during morning prayer that's going on over the intercom, if you just keep one student in mind during that and pray that they might experience God's love that day. Or maybe later at lunch when you go to the teacher's lounge and you might see a donut, then maybe you just fast from that donut and say, I'm not gonna eat that on behalf of my class later this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Or even on the ride home, you could pray a decade of the rosary and keep um, one or two or three students in mind. And those are just easy ways to start interceding. Yeah, and we're excited to see the miracles that you see within the students from your intercession in the way that it starts impacting the dynamics of a classroom, the dynamics of a school. And we'll hear all your testimonies, and we'll love them, because we're expecting We want to hear them. Yes. We want to hear them so badly that we're going to put you right here. I know that's intimidating, but it's okay. Yes. So, have a great week, and we'll see you next week.